Hello everyone, I am Dr. Jyoti Mandala. Welcome you all to the video lecture series on the course Unity 3D. We are in the process of learning C Sharp with Unity. So up to our last lecture, we have understood the basic things of how to make, uh, make our system ready to work with Unity C Sharp. And also in the last video, we have understood like how a variable can be created in how many ways like what are all the rules to be followed and we also understood how to accept the value and to display in our scene in this lecture we will be understanding about different data types that are supported in unity c sharp so actually the data type uses is it uses to specify what kind of data you want to store in a variable so you need a variable to store a data but if you if using this data type, you are going to specify the type of uh, value you are going to store in a variable. So before storing any value, it is required to mention the data type of that variable. So in C sharp, it can hold the following data types, string data type, string is a data type in C sharp, int which helps us in storing uh, uh, numeric values, character which hold, helps us in storing a single character value whereas string helps us in storing uh, a group of character values long where it also helps us in storing the numeric value only the difference between int and long is the range of values that you are storing i'm not going to talk in detail about what is range and all because um, i uh, think like you have already learned different programming languages so the same scenario here also bool this helps us in, in storing the boolean data type which can hold true or false value double which helps us in storing a uh, fractional values this is a default value uh, whereas to store the fractional values but but if you want to store floating point values you have to mention specifically like you are going to store float values which are also used to store the fractional values decimal values next decimal also use it to store uh, the uh, fra uh, fractional values like decimal values only there is a difference in the range of values that you can store with the bool boolean float and decimal all right so let us understand all these things in uh, unity editor with a sample example okay so let us open our editor so this is the editor where this is the scene that we have already designed in the last video where uh, i uh, told you how to create this text editor and how to connect your um, script to this one if you have not done that one i suggest you to go through that video and understand the basic things of connecting the script to your objects so this is the video way if you run this what happens so whatever uh, to this text box we have connected one variable okay and whatever name i have given here that will be displayed here if i try to change that name that will be displayed i hope you all have done that one along with me and you got the results all right in today's lecture we will be understanding about data type so for that i'll create a new um, script uh, file so what i'll do i'll name it as data right so a new script has been created I will rename that one with the capital D so that the naming convention will be uniform among all the variables. Okay, data. All right, now let us open that one, double click there and it will open the basic editor. Did you see here, I renamed this file name but the class here, whatever name is given for the first step that is only remaining here like it is only persistent here but we need to change that make sure like always this class name and the file name whatever you are giving are same don't simply think like if you rename that file name your class name will also change that is not going to happen all right coming back to our concept that but the, you all are aware like this is the structure of your program all right so in the last vid video if you remember we have created i i will show you that program display name did you see we created the string data type already where a name has been created and this name is our you can see this name is our name uh, one second okay this is the name that is displaying here did you see 
in this one here as a component uh, display name is connected to that name is coming here so this is the string data type just it will accept the collection of characters okay instead of going with the same program i'll add little bit complexity to this code what i want to do is we, mm, here only i'll type the name but once i type the name i don't want the data to be reflecting here i will create a button once I click that button, the text, then the data has to be displayed here. I hope you all are understanding what I want to do. I will give the input string type here, data here only. But it should not reflect directly here. I want a button to be added here. And when I click that button, then only whatever text is written here, that has to be reflected here. I hope you all are understanding. To achieve that one, what we need to do. Okay, obviously button we need to add a button to our hierarchy window so let us add one button so ui go to button okay so a button has been added just reposition as per your requirement i'll reposition here okay and this button text i will change appropriate name i will give what i will change show name okay so what i want to do Whenever I click this button, I want the text, whatever I gave in the text box here, that has to come here. All right. Now, how to do that one? Okay. Go back to, our, let us go back to our program. So, our program now, it is data.cs, right? So, now, what I will do, I will create one. Uh, obviously, I want to create one variable. So, first variable is what? I want to display that variable in, in that uh, in text box. First, what I will do? This text box contains, you can see the script, which script it is containing display name, but our script is data script, right? So I will remove this one. And then what I will do, I will connect this data to my text because this is what I want to do now, right? Now let, let us ensure that it is connected. Data has been connected. Okay. Let us go back to a program. Now I will create one variable. What is that variable? Public. Now, first data type I am using, that is string data type and the variable name is name. So, the moment I create this one, you all are aware of this thing. What happens? That name will be connected to your, um, this one, uh, script. Did you see here? Name has been connected. Okay. That means you can type here. But this has to be displayed here, isn't it or not? But first, what we will do? Here that has to be displayed here like that. I'll write the code, but late then I will tell you how to connect this button to this text box. Okay, all right. Now uh, we need to create one component of this text box also, right? So how to create that one? Private. These things we already learned in the last class. Text mesh pro, right? Text mesh pro GUI. I will create one variable T. Now what I will do, uh, you already know this start and update button, how they will work. How they will work, this start button will be working before the first frame starts and the update button will work every frame. But now I don't want to work like that. I want to create my own function and that function will be called. I will create my own function. Let me call my function as um, public void. I will call my function as display. Okay. Any name can be given. I have given. Now, this function has to be called when the button is clicked. See, suppose if you, you write the statement and start and update without the interference of this button, you will get your text read from this um, text box and it will display here. But we don't want that to happen. In that case, what we need to do, we need to create our own function and we have to call this function. When we will call this function? When the button will be clicked. We have to connect this button to this function. I'll tell you that later. Okay. Or else we can do now itself. How to connect this button to this function? Okay. So we have created our own function, right? So let us save this one. We will fill the statements in this save this one and let us go back to our unity editor now here you have created your text text and to that the name has come now coming back to the button now in this button you if you scroll down you see here a component called on click by default it is empty but we want an uh, action like whenever we click 
we want the display method has to be called. Where is the display method? The display method is available in this data. But where is this data script is connected to this text box? Is text object, isn't it or not? So we have to do this procedure. What we need to do? We need to click create a new one. So click on plus. Now, if you click on press, the name object is as of now is empty. But we have an object which is text, which has to be connected here, which is connected to the script file, right? So just select this one and drop here. First step, what you need to do, click on plus and drop that ob game object here. Now, once you drop, you will have, you need to select the function that you want to call whenever you click that button. So select that and go to data. Data is our class name and this contains all these functions and we have created our own function. Did you see display is our function name? I'll show you the program. Our function name is display. If you create more than one function that is also allowed and all the functions will be displayed there. But here we created only one function. So that has to be called like that. You need to connect. I hope you all are understanding. Right. Okay. Now once this is done. You can see the button on click, it is connecting to the, whenever you click that button, this button, it will connect to this component object and this object will call this method, uh, this class of data display. Okay, right. Now let us fill the statement that we want to do in this display. What we want to do, we want to get the data, we want to get the what is that one uh, focus of that text box right so what we need to do t equal to get component text mesh pro you need to fill this statement you have already used in your last video right now what i want to do t dot text equal to i am writing my name whatever name i give no that name has to be first what we created we created the name variable then the text mesh pro one um, uh, variable has been created that variable got the focus and then that very that text box text is filled with the name whatever you give when these two statements will be executed when we call this display method when this display method will be called this display method will be called with the button right so save this program open the editor and now let us try to run this program whether it will work or not we will see run this program okay so what i am doing in the text i need to type something right so i have written my name and when i click that did you see my name has come the moment I am typing here, it is not displaying. But whenever I click this button, then only the text will come. Right? I hope you all are understanding. And again, I will click. Did you see? My text has been changed. Because I clicked to show name again, the new text, whatever I have given in the name, that will be displayed. I hope you all are understanding. So this is the first data type that we have used. What is the first data type? String data type. Okay? Right? Now, what I want to do now, I will create another variable, another data type. Okay. So, another data type, what I will create, um, I have made this one as a comment line. I don't want to use this. What I will do, I will create um, what is the next data type we have? Let us see the list. We have int. Okay. Okay. We'll go with in x equal to 10. I have created the variable variable and directly I have given the value. In that case, no need to go with public and all. I don't want to give any value here. What I want to do? I don't want to give any value here in the text box. Okay. What we do? I directly gave the value and this variable value will be given there. Okay. Whenever I click the button, that value. I just want you people to understand what is how the, what is this int data type. You can see here, integer value has been given, numeric value. Okay. Let's save this one and let's go here. And I hope everything is right. No errors are there. Oh, there is an error. Mm, X. Okay, you should not write x like this because it is a text. What you need to do, dollar, you need to connect like this. Okay, just understand how it is connected. X. Right? 
so save observe here no, no, no errors are there save this one and let's go to our editor and let us run our program uh, run our scene game okay so what we are expecting whenever i click show name my whatever value x i have given that should be displayed did you see the x value has displayed 10 right so to make it little more appropriate i'll change this one as show okay i need to stop this and then i'll change this to show okay right all right so now we'll go to the next data type the next data type is cat okay and then let me give character a okay let's save this character data type is used to save uh, st uh, uh, store a character values into a variable right okay let's run this and show did you see the character has been displayed okay we'll go back and we'll go with the next data type that is um, what is that we have in the list it is long i will not use this long it's same like your int only just to understand the range of the value will be changing let's go with bool which is helping store the boolean values okay so did you see the moment I gave wool, it is displaying the uh, red underline saying like it is incompatible data type value given. So it holds a value of true or false. Okay, if I give true, it is showing everything right. Okay, save this. The moment, let's go to our unity. Now the moment I will run this program. Now if I click, it has to display true. Similarly, you can store a false value also and you can just check that. Next data type, let's go with the double. Now, double is a default data type which helps us storing a floating point values into the um, variables. So, 10.5 if I'm storing. So, if you want to store a floating point values, that, not floating point, decimal values, then you can go with double. So, save this. And go to your editor and run. Now, if I click show, did you see 10.5 is displaying. Now, let us see float. If I write float here, did you see the moment I write float here, 10.5 it is showing error. What is that is, if you are using float, this C sharp requires a character here added to the end of that value okay f has to be added at the end of the value so that's why we are flexible in writing the decimal value directly that's why in c sharp we will be using double which does not require any character to be added but if you are using float it is mandatory in c sharp to add f at the end of your value okay let's so store i'll change the value so that you can see the difference Earlier, uh, it was showing 10.5 for double. Now, I change it to 10.7. Let's run this and click on the show button and it has to show the floating point value, 10.7, right? Now, next one is, next data type, let's see what it is, float double blue, decimal. Decimal is also helps us to store the decimal value only. And if you are using decimal, you need to use a m value m character at the end of your value okay right just remember this if you are using float f has to be added if you are using decimal which is also used to store the fraction values m has to be m divided okay go back to your editor run your program and check 10.7 is displayed right okay i hope you all are clear up to now string int char long double float uh, and decimal boolean data type also okay these are all predefined data types you also have a provision of creating your own data types and telling what values it has to support uh, that is done by enum, enumerated data type which is enum 
you might have already observed in C programming language enum is existing, right? In C sharp also, you can use this enum. Let us see a small example how to use this enum. Uh, enum is used to create your own data type with what values it has to support. Be because with int, it is already predefined. It has to accept the integer values. With char, it, it is told like it has to as, uh, accept the alphabets. But with enum, you can create your own data type and you have, if you are creating your own data type, you have to specify also what kind of values it has to support, right? Okay, let's go back to our, this one program. Now, you need to create your own data type, right? So, for that, uh, I will delete all these things. What I'll do, I have to create my own data type. So, whenever you're creating a data type, create the data type as a public property here. Um, above the class. So, how to create this one? So, public enum. Okay. You are creating this. Uh, let me create day is my um, new data type. Okay. In this, I want to create Monday with value 1, Tuesday with value 2 like that. So, it should have a name and a value. So, Monday or else it starts with Sunday, right? Sunday equal to 1. And each value should uh, end with semicolon. Monday equal to 2. It, it should end with comma, okay? Tuesday with 3, Wednesday with 4, Thursday with 5, Friday with Saturday. And last one, don't put comma, okay? Right? So, you have created your own enumerated data type whose name is Dick. Up to here, you all are clear, I think. Right? Now, what I will do? I have to create one variable of this data type. Now, what I will do? Come back here. Create one variable. What is that variable type? Public. And what is the data type name? Day. Right? So, create day and d1. The moment I create this variable, this is a variable. This is a data type creation. This is a variable created. The moment I create this one, you can see in your editor, this text will have day. Sorry, why it is not showing? Okay, let's proceed. We'll, I'll show you that. Now, what I will do? This has been saved. Okay. All right. Now, a variable has been created, public day, day one. Now, a text box has been taken the focus. Now, coming back to your display method. In this display, what we need to do? Um, it, it is taking the component focus. Now, in the text box, what I want to display today is, okay. So, today, text I want to display today is, Whatever day I select from this list, you know, that has to be displayed. Okay. How to display that one? Today is, you need to write D1. This variable name. Right. Save this. It's found here. Let me check why it is not showing there. Enum day and public day, day one, day, day one, okay, right, and then I've created this one and I got the focus of the text box and I'm filling this one, okay. So, I saved this, let me go back to my editor, <coughs> control yes, let's see. Okay, did you see here? You got a D1 variable created and this D1 variable is having a drop-down list which have all the values, supported values. This D1 is a variable of day, day type, isn't it or not? So, day contains these values. So, any value can be selected. If you select Sunday, okay, now one uh, and then I start this game and if I click show, Today is Sunday because I have selected Sunday that Sunday is coming. If I select Monday, okay, and then I click show today is Monday. Got it. I want you people to understand 
what is this what is this is d1 is not a regular data type variable it's a variable of enumerated what is our enumerated data type day where we have created our own data type enumerated data type and then we have assigned the values to these things and we are trying to access through a variable and we are trying to display that in the text box when you are clicking the button right i hope you all are clear with this today's concept of different data types uh, um, or predefined data types and your own user defined data type with this we come to an end of today's lecture i hope you all are clear if you still face any issues let me know in the comment section below i'll be very happy to help you that is all meet in the next lecture until then thank you all of you